Welcome back. She's here to answer all of our latest questions about the COVID vaccines mm -hmm. from ABC's GMA3, What You Need to Know. Please welcome back Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Hello, welcome back. Guys. Hi, Dr. Jen. Hi. Um, good news. I got my appointment. I have my appointment for my booster shot. I can't wait. Nice. Very Congrats. excited about that. Congrats. You're getting boosted. Yeah. Ryan. Lots of news. I have to get mine. I don't know if I'm ready. Can I get mine? Moderna. You, well, you know you have your... They'll let you know. They'll tell me, because yes. I've not been told yet. Yeah. Well, tell me. Don't worry. They're, They've not told well, me. Well, first of all, you know, when we talk about the boosters, if you paid attention to the way the FDA and CDC have framed who is eligible yeah. or who is recommended, they've left so much vagary in there mm -hmm. that almost anyone can meet a criteria. Can you and mix them? What you if can you mix can. and match. Okay. It's mm -hmm. like making a lasagna. You so can mix and match. Let me give you the, what what we have heard. You know, okay. I hate this. I hate when people go, well, I had heard. Mm -hmm. I heard that if you had the Pfizer vaccine, you should get the Moderna booster. If you had the More Moderna powerful. vaccine, it doesn't really matter. No. So here, let's set that straight. Okay. First of all, there is so much confusion about this and obviously things are evolving and rapidly changing and we are learning more every day mm -hmm. and that's in large part because believe it or not we've only known about this virus for less than two years now even though it seems like forever uh -huh. but in terms of the mix and match all three of the vaccines that we have in this country are effective they're all safe they are slightly different. They have different profiles, as you would expect. Um, but a lot of it has to do with logistics. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. got one dose in one state and then they traveled or moved. <laughs> right. And so some, some vaccines may not be available. The bottom line is the CDC left that up to the individual to so-called mix and match, mm. um, partially for convenience sake and partially because the science supports that there's no risk and that they're all effective. And what is the the latest on the authorization for vaccines for children. For kids, that is the big news, you guys. It finally cleared the last hurdle. The CDC director, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, endorsed it. So therefore, it has FDA emergency use authorization, the Pfizer vaccine for children 5 through 11. Those shots, yes. So such a relief to so many parents and pediatricians alike. Those shots are going into children's arms as we speak. So parents or grandparents or caregivers can go to vaccines.gov to find out where it's given in their area or contact mm -hmm. your children's pediatrician. Because there are so can... many kids that haven't seen their grandparents mm -hmm. in so such a long that's time. Right. Yep. Oh, that's such great news. So how, like, how do you, I know that parents are so divided and very nervous mm -hmm. on um, whether or not yeah. they should vaccinate their small children. How do you discuss it with parents? You know, I, I'm so glad you asked about that because we've reported at ABC News and, and a lot of people have heard these statistics that only a third of parents are ready to go today. Two thirds are hesitant, planning not to, want to wait and see, you know, they're kind of in that category. And first and foremost, I think we should recognize that that is natural and normal. As parents, we want to protect our children. Every parent wants to do the best for his or her child that they can. So it should be encouraged to ask questions mm -hmm. um, about something like this and then to give the risks benefits. And right now, all of the science, all of the data, clearly supports the fact that the benefits outweigh the risks. And um, that's a conversation that parents should have with their child's pediatrician. My friend Sissini was uh, vaccinated while pregnant. Yep. And uh, she's doing great and the baby's great. But I'm curious, what is the latest when it comes to vaccinations and pregnant women? Well, this is an important population. There's 4 million live births in this country every year. It's an immune compromised <clears throat> condition of pregnancy. Mm. So it is a higher risk for complications of COVID-19. It is recommended for pregnant women to get vaccinated. They can do it in any trimester. They can do it before they get pregnant. There is no infertility link there. Mm -hmm. I have to ah. emphasize mm -hmm. that. That is a myth. We have not seen any incidence of increased miscarriage rate or infertility rates. They can get it while breastfeeding. And they can pass these protective antibodies to the fetus and protect that newborn. Um, so it's really, really important. And so many pregnant women don't know that the CDC and ACOG, OBGYNs, are recommending it. So They've got to get the, I mean, I, I feel like they're, because the information comes from sometimes strange sources, 
is yep. that it's it's almost like you need to be on the air 24 hours a day. <laughs> Sorry, I hate Will to break it to you. Will she accept the challenge? Thank you very yes, I'm let's just saying. Get, let's like, get your response to that. You know, in some sort of like. A, it's a lot. I, you know, I know what you're lot. saying. It's a lot of information. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's been politicized, but there's science and data here. And, and we have to remember that in the United States, the FDA is the global gold standard. Yeah. We set the bar much higher than other countries. So, And we are in the still in the midst of a pandemic. So it's right. important. All right. A couple more questions. Real quick break. We'll be right back with Dr. Jennifer Ashton. <laughs> She Welcome accepted back. the challenge 24-7. Welcome back. Now, <laughs> we are talking. There's been a lot of uh, developments, and uh, yeah. there's lots of... Uh, We've learned a lot about drugs to take during COVID, illnesses from COVID. What are the updates you have? I think, you know, you're hitting all the important points, you guys, because when you look at this pandemic, I think I look at it on multiple levels, different times, because I've been entrenched in this since day one as my role um, as chief medical correspondent at ABC, but also as a practicing physician. And, you know, we have to look at where we've come for testing, where we've come for diagnosis, where we've come for prevention and treatment. And when you talk about prevention and treatment, Kelly, that's where mm -hmm. you get into what drugs are under development? How close are we to something that doesn't require you to be so sick that you're hospitalized? Like a pill, like a, like exactly. a, like a, a like Tylenol, a, like a, mm -hmm. right. Like Tamiflu, for Tamiflu, example. Tamiflu, yes. Right, which right. is what we can give to people who have been either exposed to influenza or start to become sick with influenza to shorten the duration of their symptoms. So. There is a pill, an antiviral pill form that is under research and development that we may be seeing as soon as the end of this year, the end of December, or the beginning of next year. Mm. I know. Mm. And, and I think what that speaks to, and this would be for what we call prophylaxis, people who have been exposed to COVID-19, mm. or test positive to prevent them from getting worsening illness and, and more severe symptoms. But I think what we're getting to is we are seeing on all those different fronts, this virus is not going anywhere. We're learning how to live with it with vaccine, treatment, prevention, mm -hmm. testing, screening, all of those things. And we've come a long way. We still have a lot of ways to go, but we've made progress. What, I mean, before, I just, what do you think about people who are choosing my mind. not to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. what, like, what, how do you think, uh, and I'm, again, I'm gonna leave like pre-existing conditions mm -hmm. that prevent mm -hmm. people. There are certain people that cannot be vaccinated. But what about the people that are choosing to not get vaccinated? So I think that that is a perfect example where any practicing clinician or doctor, healthcare provider, is actually used to dealing with this type of scenario all the time because we counsel patients. It's our job to educate and inform. It's the patient's right to make their own decision. And we have to respect that even if we don't agree with it. And I think that it's easier, believe it or not, ironically for doctors to respect a patient's decision, even if it goes against what we think mm. science and mm. data really speaks, you know, they're going in the wrong direction. We, we deal with that all the time at the beginning and end of the day. It is the patient's right to decide what they want to do. Well, thank you for coming in with uh, that information. Good luck with your 24-hour network. <laughs> Thanks, be sure Ryan. to tune in to GMA3, What You Need to Know, weekdays on ABC, and we'll be right back here on Live.